micrometers long. Now they want the answer here in millimeters. So it's always best to put your um, calculation in the unit in which they want the answer, because I think it reduces the chances of you making a mistake. So that would be 0 0.003 millimeters, because that is three micrometers. So then you just have to multiply 1250 by 0 0.03, And that gives you the answer, which is 3.375 millimeters. Then it goes on to photographs taken of the image obtained by the light microscope could further be enlarged during the using the projector. Why might the enlarged image be unable to tell us more about the structure of Yersinia pestis? Well, this is an answer, um, this wants an answer about res the difference between resolution and magnification. So you can magnify things as many times as you want. However, you won't see any more detail because you haven't changed the resolution. So there's no further resolution when you magnify it. Um, with a projector because there's no greater resolution than when you've looked at it with a microscope and taken a picture of that image at that point. Outbreaks of plague still occur occasionally. Plague is transmitted by several methods including droplet infection, close contact between people and fleas moving between infected rats and people. Now, suggest two ways to minimize the spread of an outbreak of plague. Now, suggest means you haven't been taught about methods to minimize the spread of an outbreak of plague. However, you should have been taught about methods of infection. You should consider, therefore, how you should minimize droplet infection, how you could minimize close contact between people, and how you could prevent fleas moving between infected rats and people. If you talk about ways in which you could minimize these factors, then you are going to minimize the spread of the outbreak of plague. Things that they were looking for were keep indoors, which would be minimizing close contact between people, um, increase ventilation or wear masks, which is because if they've told you it's by droplet infection. Um, measures to exclude or kill rats or fleas and quarantining for people with the symptoms. Now herbicides work in a number of different ways. Some herbicides mimic the action of the auxin IAA. What's the normal action of the auxin? Well you just need to know this that the normal action is that it um, stimulate cells to elongate or divide. Then they go on to talk about the herbicide atrazine. Now, atrazine works by disabling plastoquinone, one of the proton pumps in Photosystem 2. Explain how atrazine would kill a susceptible plant. So this is expecting you to explain the consequences of disabling a proton pump in Photosystem 2. Remember, Photosystem 2 is in the um, thylakoid membrane, and Photosystem 2 is where um, photolysis occurs, and the light is being absorbed by Photosystem 2, and that causes electrons to move along a chain of, of, of carriers and proton pumps and that moves hydrogen ions from the stroma into the thylakoid interior. Those hydrogen ions then flow out through ATP synthase back into the stroma from the thylakoid interior, and that generates ATP. Additionally, um, once the electrons travel to photosystem one, that electron is then used to reduce NADP to NADPH electron and the hydrogen. 
Now the ATP and the NADPH are then used to uh, regenerate RUBP in the Calvin cycle. So all of these points are relevant to explain how it would kill a susceptible plant because if you enact, disable plastoquinone, then you would prevent the movement of hydrogen ions across the membrane from the stroma into the thylakoid interior. You would prevent the production of ATP. That ATP wouldn't be used to regenerate RUBP. Additionally, you would stop the production of NADPH, which would not be used to regenerate the RUBP. So all of those things would lead to stopping of the light independent reactions which would mean that the, um, the plant would be unable to um, fix sugars. So what they were looking for here was there'd be um, no chemiosmosis because there'd be no proton pump. 